Hello, Westford. A young child's letter to the Board of Health pressed the adorable button this week. There's a new water tank on Prospect Hill, and town officials observed the 17th anniversary of 9-11. I'm Jack Wang, the Westford Cat host of Personal Finance Playbook and a guest news anchor for this week's show. Westford Cat News is next. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our free daily newsletter with all the latest Westford news delivered right to your inbox. Just visit westfordcatnews.org and click on the red subscribe button in the upper right hand corner. Audrey Shulman, president of the nonprofit organization Home Energy Efficiency Team, or HEAT, made a presentation about underground natural gas leaks to the members of the Board of Health on September 10th. Shulman said her greatest concerns about the leaks related to the impact on the climate and the dangerous emission of methane. I'm going to talk about uh, natural gas leaks from pipes under the street. Um, and to give you an idea of why this could potentially be a problem, you should know that uh, uh, a lot of the pipes in Massachusetts are really old. Uh, they're the second oldest and most leak prone in the country. Um, so there's some pipes that are in Boston. This is actually a, a detail that you see from a national grid map uh, showing two pipes uh, running down Beacon Street and uh, what is that, Calm Ave in Back Bay that date back to 1860 and 1882. And these, these pipes are still in use. So you can imagine pipes uh, under the ground for over well over 100 years at this point. Um, are going to be in some, you know, uh, bad repair. Uh, they can leak and uh, they can crack and cause, you know, sort of catastrophic problems at times. But, you know, the, sort of perennially, they will leak. Uh, the utilities are currently on a 20-year time frame uh, for replacing all of these older leak-prone pipes. On a lighter note, Health Director Jeff Stevens reported on a letter he received from someone named Jocelyn, who would like to open a snack shack in a field somewhere in town. The return address had only a post office box number, but Stevens had replied to Jocelyn's letter and is waiting to hear back from her. And lastly, this came in today, and I'm going to respond to this today. I was sent a letter by a little girl named Jocelyn. That's great. And she would like to open up a snack shack at a field. Hi, my name is Jocelyn. I live in Westford. I want to ask if my cousin and I can have a snack shack in the green field across the way. Please write back. In the letter, please write if I can or not, and if it costs money and how much. Thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the only information I have is the P.O. box for Jocelyn. And so we don't know which green field across no. the way this so is. Jocelyn, <laughs> well, if you're watching, I have questions for you. <laughs> oh, your that's email great. Address, right. So I'm going to reach out to Jocelyn, and maybe she's going to come and ask for fees to be reduced for wherever the snack shack is. Yeah, let's hear the, let's hear the story. Yeah. The whole entrepreneur. And I'm debating on writing back to her in crayon. <laughs> <laughs> To watch the entire Board of Health meeting, visit westfordcat.org. Here's Joyce Polino Crane with a highlight from the Selectmen's meeting. Thanks, Jack. Selectmen are gearing up for special town meeting on Monday, October 15th. At their September 11th meeting, Selectmen set the order of the draft warrant articles and town manager Jody Ross reviewed them. Here's Ross. So Article 1 is unpaid bills, and I believe at this point we don't have any. So if that continues, we can uh, ask you to remove this. Uh, Article 2 is budget adjustments, and at this point we do have two, and your motions are in your packet too. Uh, one is from Water Personal Services, and one is from Water Enterprise Reserve Fund. If you remember, they had the forest road water main break, and um, those particularly in uh, relation to that. 
Article 3 is um, budget transfers. And we do have a small one in there for the assessors. Uh, we actually are having some additional work in the assessors, as you know, with the slider and analyzing that. And we also have had um, an uptick in the, the needs of the department. So we're looking to increase the hours of Sheila, who is a part-timer in that office. So that's the, and we'll explain more when you, when you go to uh, vote on that. Article 4 is capital. Capital is meeting tomorrow, but at this Friday. point, I'm sorry, Friday. I thought tomorrow was Friday. <laughs> Darn. Um, so at this point, the only one we have in there is the Vinebrook Estates, which you will be hearing about whether we want to change that from a betterment into uh, a capital to pave the streets there. Uh, then Article 5 is the asphalt plant monitoring which is the Board of Health seeking $10,000 to do some initial baseline monitoring, not out of the mitigation funds. Uh, article 6 is our balancing the budget article. Article 7 is the fire station premium to reduce the bond payments. That is somewhat complicated. If you'd like to talk, uh, us talk about it tonight, or we can talk to you about it when you're ready to vote on the 25th. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, article... Eight, I'm sorry, I was on the motions document there, is um, another kind of a um, financial article that we will be explaining in line with the Municipal Modernization Act. Article 9 is the slider article. Article 10 is, if you remember, the solar um, holdings article from the assessors and I don't know if we're going to be ready on this town meeting either but right now we have a placeholder to finish that up and that's it. Selectmen will discuss and take positions on the Warren articles at their next meeting. To watch the entire September 11th meeting visit westfordcat.org. Back to you Jack. Public safety and town officials gathered in the courtyard next to Town Hall on September 11th to observe the 17th anniversary of the tragic day when terrorists flew planes into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and crashed a plane in a field in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, causing almost 3,000 deaths on American soil. Here's State Representative James Arciero paying tribute. Today marks the 17th anniversary of that fateful day in 2001 when events in New York City, Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania would change the United States of America forever. That dark day when nearly 3,000 Americans would perish in unthinkable ways. When buildings we thought would last for decades would fall in hours. When the center of the military might, the Pentagon, would be struck and when everyday passengers on an airplane would become American heroes by sacrificing themselves to protect the lives of others. That day would ultimately lead to war in the Middle East where thousands of brave American men and women would answer their nation's call to service. September 11, 2001 also hit us here at home in Westford when we would lose two of our very own citizens that day, Susan McKay and James Hayden, who were on Flight 11 and Flight 175 that crashed into the World Trade Center. We honor those courageous men and women who put themselves in arm's way and those who sacrificed their own lives to help people that they never knew. The first responders the police, and the firefighters, those brave men and women who led our efforts fall in these tragic events, followed by our uniformed brothers and sisters who took up arms against the perpetrators. September 11, 2001 is a dark day in the history of our nation. And just across the street on the common, another group of residents paid homage to the fallen. Here's John Pyra playing taps on the anniversary of 
As of Monday, September 10th, Secretary of State William F. Galvin ordered a district-wide hand recount of the 88,000 votes cast for the 3rd Congressional District state primary race. Lori Trahan of Westford is the apparent winner with 122 votes more than Dan Coe of Andover. The difference between the two is less than one half of 1% qualifying for a recount throughout the entire district. Westford Town Clerk Patty Doobie said all recounts must be completed by 5 p.m. on September 17th. Westford Cat will bring you the outcome of this election. Stay tuned. A new 600,000 gallon water storage tank was installed on September 11th at Prospect Hill off Main Street. It replaces the one built in 1907, according to Water Superintendent Steve Cronin. The tank provides water pressure, domestic storage, and fire protection storage, he said. Construction for the $2.4 million tank began in March and is expected to be completed in January. News Director Joyce Polino Crane sat down in the studio recently with Scott Hazelton, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and Tom Mahana, Chairman of the Permanent Building Committee, to correct the record on action taken by Selectmen in their August 28th meeting. Um, I need to correct the record from our new show of August 29th, in which we said that the uh, Selectmen had approved commissioning a schematic design for 63 Main Street. The schematic design that Selectman approved on August 28th was for 51 Main Street, right, Scott? Correct. Crane asked Hazelton where things stood between the town and the owner of 63 Main Street. The historic house was severely damaged in a 2016 fire and remains vacant. It is, uh, of course, still in private ownership. There's uh, obviously insurance and so forth proceeding with, from the fire. Um, yeah, the town has uh, had discussions with uh, the owner through you know, their attorney to uh, mm -hmm. consider acquiring it. It is certainly of interest to the town. Yes. Um, but th right now that's all that we have is just uh, ongoing discussions about possibly acquiring it. And how big is that property approximately? It's about three acres. Um, mm -hmm. And what's nice, in the back, it actually uh, <coughs> attaches to other town lands, so you can connect from Rodenbush all the way to Town Hall in, in the rear of the property. So with things like, like parking and traffic, that actually is quite um, interesting uh, possibility to give us a little bit more parking back there if, if the stars align to the property. To watch the entire Main Street show, visit westfordcat.org. Hi, this is Superintendent of Schools, Bill Olson and I welcome you to the 2018-2019 school year. Our school year began back in the summer when we had a very interesting and engaging and very busy two-day summer institute with all of our administrators. Uh, day one of our summer institute involved a, a very, very detailed evacuation plan uh, simulating a school emergency where we not only talked about school safety issues, procedures, and protocols. But we also did a simulated evacuation from one of our buildings to, an, to a rally point that students and staff would go to in the event of a uh, school emergency, and then on to a, a school evacuation point um, where students from many of our schools would evacuate to in the event of a school crisis. Uh, it was a smooth start to the school year, although I will say in all my years in education, the first two weeks of school were probably the warmest I've ever experienced. And I want to thank you for your patience and understanding. When I changed uh, from a full day of school to a couple of half days of school in that first week, uh, Dr. Clary and I uh, went uh, into some of the buildings, and particularly the upper floors, were just too warm. And by 10.30, quarter of 11, 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, students were really beginning to show the signs of fatigue from the uh, heat, and the staff also. During the summer also, uh, we were very busy with some summer projects. I want to thank the Westford Town Permanent, School, uh, Permanent Building Committee, excuse me, along with the School Committee, the Finance Committee, uh, Sluckman, and Town Voters, who approved appropriations for a new Abbott School roof. That project was uh, accomplished on time and beautifully done by Titan Roofing. Company was the finest, uh, one of the finest roofing projects I've seen in over 30 years of work in our uh, school system, and almost 49 years in education. The day school is um, 
is in the process of building a new playground. We have a contractor on site, uh, groundbreaking has just begun, and we anticipate that that playground will be ready, I would think, probably around the second week in October. It's going to be an exciting year, a lot of initiatives. I'll be giving my goals to the school committee in another two weeks, and I look forward to seeing you again. This marks our 100th episode of Adoptable Pet and 100% track record. Every pet we featured found a home. This week's featured pets, Bella and Benji, an unlikely duo, are available to be adopted at the Lowell Humane Society. Here's production coordinator Patty Stalker with more. It's the 100th episode of Adoptable Pet, and I couldn't be prouder to work with the wonderful staff and volunteers at the Lowell Humane Society and helping to find homes for these precious pets. Let's keep in the tradition of getting these animals adopted by finding a loving home for this mismatched pair, Bella and Benji. Here's shelter volunteer Roger Logaman with more. These two are Bella and Benji. Bella here is a six-year-old uh, pit bull mix, mostly Staffordshire Terrier, um, very sweet dog. Benji is a four-year-old Shih Tzu. Uh, Bella and Benji have lived together for several years. They came in together and uh, we're looking for an adopter that'll take them home together and, and keep the pair together. Both uh, Bella and Benji are good with uh, other dogs, cats, children. Bella being as uh, strong and big as she is, is probably not ideally suited for very small children, but, um, but she certainly is a sweetheart. And she would be a good pet for, uh, for any family with, uh, with kids beyond the toddler stage. Bella, can you sit? Would sit. Good girl, Bella. Good girl. Benji. Benji, come here. Come here, buddy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Yeah, I know. I can't pet her him without petting you, can I? Yeah. You're the attention hound in the pair, aren't you? Yeah. Hey. Hey, can I have it? Can I have it? Benji, bring it here. Would you bring it back? Good boy, Benji. Good boy. Can I have it? Thank you. So anybody looking for a pair of dogs to add to the family, this is a great combination. <clears throat> Something for everybody, big and small, male and female, and always friendly. Aren't you, sweetie? Huh? If you'd like to learn more about Bella and Benji, or would like to learn how to donate, volunteer, foster a pet, or fill their wish list, visit LowellHumaneSociety.org. They're located at 951 Broadway Street in Lowell. Call 978-452-7781. You can also find them on Facebook. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. Here's Rekha Sharma with another health tip. Hi everyone, I'm Rekha Sharma, your Ayurveda practitioner, back with a new health tip for Westford Cat News. Today I'm going to talk about beetle leaves. It helps to pacify the water element of the body and helps to prevent bronchitis or respiratory problems. It increases the body's metabolism and helps to get rid of harmful toxins and cellulites. It prevents acne, allergies, and skin infection. Beetle leaves are packed with natural analgesics and antibiotics. It improves the overall gut health. Beetle leaves-based shampoos and masks help to reduce hair loss and dandruff. Beetle leaf juice can be applied to the affected areas on a regular basis. It can be eaten two to three times a week to get the benefits. If you have any allergies, please contact your PCP before consuming or applying. I'll be back with a new health tip. Bye for now. Our volunteer meteorologist, Terry Eliasson, spoke with News Director Joyce Polino crane this week about the weather for the coming season. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, I mean, so thankfully for us, uh, Florence is staying far away, although 
there are some indications that the remnants of Florence uh, early next week could sort of get caught up in a front that moves through. So we may end up getting some sort of, um, you know, re leftover rainfall from it. But really, we're being spared. You know, the coastline over the weekend will have some high seas and the danger of rip currents. So if you're one of those thrill seekers headed down to the south coast to go surfing, just be aware that, you know, even though the hurricane is far away, um, it, the effects will be felt all the way up to our coastline to some extent. Um, but as for our weather, uh, you know, we've been very warm. It's been, we had our warmest August on record, one of the warmest summers on record. Um, and we're continuing to be warm into the next sort of seven to 10 days. It's going to be very warm this weekend in the 80s. Um, but it looks like by the end of September, we may finally get sort of a more fall-like pattern. Maybe the last seven days or so of September, we could actually be cooler than normal for, for a change. Um, that still remains to be seen. If you, you know, the atmosphere is a very complex and fickle uh, place, but it does appear as though some fall weather finally may get in here by the end of September. But I do believe that fall as a whole, September, October, November, will probably end up averaging out above average, especially with this warm star we've had this September. And the ramifications of that, you know, just like last year, uh, the fall foliage will probably be a little bit later than usual, maybe a little bit duller. We'll see how the rest of September goes. So if you're planning to go up north, say late September, early October, you may not see the vivid colors that you would normally see that time of year. Um, but as far as crops and all that stuff goes, as far as I've heard, the apple crops are doing just fine. And um, But yet another warm fall. We've had, it seems like every fall lately has been an extension of summer. And this is, again, another, another one of those. Eliason is the meteorologist and executive weather producer at CBS WBZ TV Boston. With Hurricane Florence bearing down on the Carolinas this week, the weather is on everyone's mind. Fortunately, this region is not part of the hurricane's path, so let's see what weather.com is forecasting for the Westford area. Here's Westford Cat Marketing Outreach Director Sarah Fletcher with suggestions for things to do in the area. Thanks, Jack. The Middlesex Conservation District is holding its annual Fall Bulb and Perennial Sale on Friday, September 21st from 3 to 6 p.m. and Saturday, September 22nd from 8 a.m. to noon at Great Brook Farm State Park, 1018 Lowell Road, Carlisle. The sale includes tulips, daffodils, specialty bulbs, perennials, and fertilizer. The Middlesex Conservation District is a nonprofit environmental agency dedicated to protecting soils and waters in Middlesex County. Visit middlesexconservation.org for more information. The Rodenbush Community Center is holding its fall town-wide yard sale on Saturday, September 22nd from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Set up on the Abbott School front lawn or at your own home. Locations will be advertised on local media. Rodenbush is also accepting donations for its Savers fundraiser. Items can be dropped off at the Abbott School between 8 and 1 p.m. on Saturday, September 22nd. For more information, visit savers.com slash donate and to register for the yard sale and pay the $10 fee, visit rodenbush.org. The Monday Mystery Book Club meets at the Fletcher Library on Monday, September 24th at 10.30 a.m. The September selection is Dead Woman Walking by Sharon Bolton. Copies of the book are available for checkout at the main desk. New members are welcome and no registration is required. Visit westfordlibrary.org for more information. I'm Sarah Fletcher, Marketing Outreach Manager at Westford CAT. Back to you, Jack. That's it for now, Westford. We leave you with time-lapse footage of the installation of the new water tower on Prospect Hill. <laughs> 